Hi guys, today I thought I would share with you what is in my little on-desk toolkit, my kind of go-tos for when I'm doing my journal sessions. I decided to do this because a lot of people ask me what's in my pencil case. I get asked this all the time and so many people are like, do another video, do an updated what's in my pencil case video. And I spoke about it a little bit on the podcast that me and Meg do on the last episode um, and I shared what was in my pencil case. It's not really a pencil case that I use often, it's just kind of got my go-to planner supplies in and obviously my planner system is a bit all over the place at the moment so I don't use it that often but I spoke about my actual pencil case in that podcast but I thought I would share this on my channel today because this is what I use more than a pencil case. This is a little container, a little toolkit type thing. It's from Flying Tiger and I got it quite a few years ago now, I don't think you can still get it. I'll show you what it looks like at the end when it's emptied, like on its side, but it's basically a little metal um, toolkit shaped container with a little wooden handle. It's not the strongest of handles, I was debating gluing them in <laughs> when I got it because it would always fall off when I lifted it, but considering it stays on my desk most of the time, I've just left it as it is. I did also add some little feet onto it as well. Um, so it didn't scratch my desk and it can slide across my desk quite easily. But yeah, in here I keep all of my tools for when I'm journaling. I don't use them all every single journaling session, but I do use a lot of them pretty much every time. If you're maybe thinking of starting to journal, this might be a good starting point to gather the right sort of tools that you might need. There's not much really when you think about it. Like this is, if I had all of these with me, I actually probably wouldn't even need all of them. Um, I'd be pretty much set for journaling. Like these are the, the core things that I would use when I'm journaling. So the first main thing that I use all of the time, and you will have seen it in my videos, is some double-sided tape. I don't really have a preference of brand. I have been sent quite a few different double-sided tape rolls over the years, so I just have them all put in a um, box on my shelves, just labelled adhesives. So it's just got glue, double-sided tape, tape, um, sticky dots, like so many different adhesives in there and a lot of them I've picked up from events or I've been sent them by brands. And yeah, I don't really have a preference. I tend to look at the price and go for the cheaper ones because you can't really tell how long it's going to last until a year or something has passed. And so far all of the things I've stuck in with, I think I used the Works double-sided tape, the really cheap ones, for ages. The journals I have from like 2016 or so, um, the things in there are still stuck in. So. You know, it's done five years, so that's worth the money. If they start falling out now, then that's fine by me. Um, I'll just restick them to something else. But yeah, this one, I don't actually know what brand it is. I can't remember what brand it is. It doesn't have a brand on the inside or anything. But this is one I'm using at the moment. The other tapes that I have in here are these two. So this is one of the red tapes, like super sticky red tapes. So this is like super strong double-sided tape. Um, it's a bit thicker, like it doesn't lay quite as flat on the page, but it definitely sticks things down. I think this one is from Craft Label. Um, I can't remember if I was sent it, I can't remember if I bought it. You'll always be able to find some sort of red tape in a craft store. It's kind of just an upgrade from the normal regular tape, and it does usually come a bit thinner as well, but you can get it in different sizes. Same with normal double-sided tape, they come in different size rolls. You'll see that I tend to just use this and cut it up um, into thinner strips if I need it. I also have a foam tape in here that I use to make things like rise up, but I don't tend to do that all that often, not in my journals anyway, because my journals are bulky enough as it is, but sometimes I just, I want to have something a bit raised to give it a bit of a shadow, so I've got my double-sided um, foam tape in here. Again, I think this was a craft label, a lot of my recent tapes and adhesives are from the craft label. The other thing I use all the time is a glue stick, this one is by Do Crafts, it's from their Stick It range. I've only recently finished my last Pritt stick because I did buy Pritt sticks in bulk in like 2014, 15 and that did last me quite a few years but I have run out of those recently so I've just been going through the ones that I've been sent, bought, just anything that's in my adhesive box. I did also get sent this one by my friend Lindsay which is a beast of a glue stick um, in comparison to this. This is like normal sized glue stick, like this is your average size, does that say how many grams it is? Uh, 36 gram glue stick, like this is, you know, they have this size at school, like, I don't know, this is your average glue stick. This is quite a bit different. 
<laughs> but it is massive if I can get the lid off yeah like it's a whole frigging glue stick in a ginormous size um never seen one like this before but she sent me it she is from the US yeah so now I have this this has been sat on my desk because it doesn't fit <laughs> anywhere else this is kind of a novelty thing i'll get around to using it eventually um it's 115 grams i've just seen that down here so this is like i can't do maths but it's like something times bigger <laughs> than this one um i will get around to using it but for now this little guy is the one that i use because he fits in my little toolkit just fine glue in some kind of stick form is always handy i'm always using it my other alternative glues are these ones uh, which are in a pen form. These ones are more like PVA glue. I think this one's actually running out. It's like got a bend in it. I think that's the one that was running out. These two are by Do Crafts again. And again, it's from their Stick It range. They're really, really gloopy. But obviously, it's a bit more accurate than having like a pot and a spatula or something. That's like old school PVA. This is the ultimate glue pen by Dot and Dab, which I think is a craft label brand. This one I tend to use when I am trying to stick in some sort of really detailed die cut. For example, something like this, which isn't sticky on the back, it doesn't have any sort of adhesive on the back already. Um, it's very thin, it's gonna make a massive mess if I try to stick this in with a Pritt stick, and PVA probably won't cut it because, again, too much of a mess. But this glue in here it's more of like a pen tip, so it's got like a rollable tip, which can be a bit iffy at times, like the glue can get stuck, but it's so much more detailed. So for things like this, I can literally draw the glue onto it. There's no mess to it. It sticks just fine. The other one I have in here, which I haven't really used all that much, it's a Pritt glue pen kind of thing. I think again this one was from Lindsay. If you're watching Lindsay you'll have to correct me. I can't actually remember. I think this was from you. But it has a very different tip. It's got like almost um it's like a kind of I don't know it's got like a little hole for it to come out of but it's it's more of a wider thing so you can get quite a wide surface area covered in glue. But yeah like I said not really use that one all that much. So those are my various glue pens. Um, the only reason I have two of these, obviously, is one is running out and the other one is full up. So I should probably sort that out, bin it, I don't know. Next, I have a couple of washi samples on a card. These were sent to me by friends. They're only really in here because I haven't put them into my washi sample tub that I have on my shelf. But I have used these since they've been in here. So if you're someone who has quite a few washi tapes or washi samples, then maybe bunging a couple of those in here will help you to get through them a bit. I have a rubber or if you're not from the UK, an eraser. Um, this is just a Stedler, Stedler one. This is the type of rubber I'd have in my pencil case growing up. Um, it's just a very, I mean, this is disgusting. It's kind of dirty. It's got like a dirt tan line. <laughs> um, but this is, yeah, a very good rubber. I don't use it all that often, but it's in there if I need it. I then have my go-to scissors. These are by the brand Westcott. They're a titanium pair of scissors. They've got like a little rubbery bit in the handle, so they're quite comfy to use. I think this is the four centimeter blade. I either had the three centimeter one and I had to get the four centimeter one because that one was out of stock, or I had the 4cm and this is the 5cm, I can't remember. I did prefer the smaller ones to these. These aren't bad, there's no real mega difference between them, other than the fact that the smaller ones were cheaper. The thing that I look for when I'm buying scissors for journaling is the tip of them need to be pointed. Let me grab my drawer of scissors so I can show you what I mean by the tip of them. Let's, I'm just going to zoom you in a bit. We're going to do a scissor comparison, just so I can show you what I'm on about. Um, <laughs> these scissors are super cheap, they were from Aldi I think, um, they have a squared off tip, so you can see the tip of them is like a straight edge, like it's just a straight edge. These aren't great for cutting detailed things because they give you a really blunt cut, like the edge of them 
it just, I don't know, I've, I've never really liked using these sort of scissors. They're fine for just, you know, cutting random things out roughly. They're just not as great for doing craft sort of things with. Same with these, these are like little travel scissors, um, but they've got the same thing where the tip of them are just like a blunt edge. They're not pointed at all. When you're buying scissors that you want to use in journaling and cutting like detailed things or like really clean, clean cuts, clean edges, um, you want something like this that has a pointed tip so the scissors end in a point. These ones are also like that, they're probably even sharper. These are from a paper gang box, they're just a weirder shape and I don't like the handle. <laughs> they're very cool scissors, it's just these ones are much more comfy to use than these. These are just novelty in my eyes. So these are my go-to scissors for journaling. Um, I think the three centimetre ones, or the ones down from this, they did have a sharper point. Um, like it was just more detailed than these, but these still had the pointed end. So I went for these ones because the other ones were out of stock. The next thing I have in here is a little highlighter. I have the rest of my mild liner highlighters in my pencil case that I use for planning. Um, but this one is just one that I grab for, it's your basic yellow. And I use it when I've got like my scribbly notes on my desk. Um, and I might want to highlight something. I also use it to cross off things on checklists. It's just a highlighter and it's one that I grab for more than others. That's the only pen I have in here though. The rest of my pens are in this pot and I don't really use this for journaling particularly but having it in this pot it's just harder to see. Um, so yeah, I have this one in my little toolbox so I can see it and grab for it a bit easier. But my little pen pot is just full of pens as you can probably tell. Next in here I have a stapler. Um, this is really kind of grotty now. The plastic is just kind of giving up on me. This was either from Flying Tiger or Hamer. I don't remember. <laughs> it's a bit broken, it's a bit near. Yeah. But it still does the job. It's still a stapler, it still has staples. It still staples things when I need it. I do have other sizes of staplers. I have a really tiny one, I've got a really big one. But this one is a good size for journaling. It's just your standard stapler size. And it was mint, which is prettier than like a grey, boring one that you can get in <laughs> literally any stationery shop. Um, I just went for a pretty coloured one. I also have a one punch hole punch. I find this not as easy to punch things out with compared to like a normal double hole one. And I think that's because the double hole one that I have, which is in another tub somewhere, um, it's actually from the same set as this, like it's the same colour. I've lost the base to it so I can just constantly see where the holes are on the back. This one's just not as easy to see that because the thing's attached to it. But yeah, this does still come in handy. This little tape dispenser is probably one of the least used things now. <laughs> this is from the brand Mustard and it is covered in marks and dirt and I really need to clean it. I sent this with a bundle of stuff from one of their ranges but this sits in here with a washi tape on it and it's a washi tape that I use when I am covering my address on parcels. So I use this actually a lot more when I was doing unboxing videos or working with brands or scent stuff or I had like the Pipsticks packages to open. Because I don't really do much of that anymore this has just become a bit not needed it's just it just lives in there now so it was handy to have this in here but it's not so much anymore um i might change it out for something i don't know i don't really use washi tapes on a dispenser anymore i did have i'm sure if any of you have been around for a long time you remember the washi washi um real things that i had and they looked really cool when they had all the washies on but i just have too many washies and i use a lot of my washies like off of the roll, I kind of, you know, open them out and put them across my page to see if the colour will go and then I'll roll them back up if I don't like them or just rip them off and use them. Having them on a dispenser, you can't really do that, like you can't test a thing and then have to like roll it back up. It's just much more of a faff, so I don't really use washi tape on dispensers for my journal, that's why I have my shelf because I can just grab them off use them, pop them back on. I then have a stamp block. This is a clear acrylic stamp block. It is very dirty. It's got stuff all over it. I think I just chose this one to be in here because it's one of the thinner blocks that I own. Most of my stamps are clear stamps, so they need a block to be used. The actual stamps are actually on my shelf in a box, but the stamp block that I have is here because the rest of my stamp blocks are also in a different box. So instead of taking two boxes down and all of that, I can just pull out one box, find the stamp, and then have a block 
right to hand to use. I then have some ink and my date stamps. This is a little Memento Tuxedo Black Dewdrop ink pad. The only reason I have this in this size is convenience. I pretty much only use it with this stamp. So this is my date stamp. I got this date stamp and have been using it since 2013. And I know this because 2013 is when the date stamp starts. So I've got 2013, so I've used it 2013, 2014, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19. I've used it for a bit of documenting 2020 and a bit of documenting 2021. But then it's still got 2022, 23 and 24. <laughs> so I've got a few years left in this yet. I only paid like £2 or something for this in Asda back in 2013. But that's the date stamps that I use in all of my journaling spreads. Um, super handy. If you don't have one of these, find one. It's just such an easy way to make the date look neat when you write it on the page. And it's also easy to see, it like stands out a lot easier when it's all in the same text or font. The last thing I have in here really isn't something I use that often, but again, it's handy to have them somewhere nearby. And it's a little jar of pins for my pin board because above my desk, I have two cork boards. So instead of having these like out on display all of the time, I've just got them in here. Um, this is where they live. They just kind of sit in here underneath everything. So these two things are kind of just in here so I know where they are. There's not really much more to say about that. I think these were originally from Wilco. I don't know, some, some collection a while ago. I really wanted just some basic like ball pins, the little ball on the end. I didn't want the classic ones which are like a pin shape, you know, like the... I don't know what shape that is. What other shape would you call that? It's a pin shape, right? But yeah, I wanted the little ball shaped ones. So that's everything that was in my little little toolbox. This is what the toolbox looks like. I call it a toolbox because it looks like a toolbox. And then, oh my God, the feet are so dusty. <laughs> let me just, let me just dust the feet off before I show you. So the feet that I've put on it, so it slides across my desk are these little fluffy ones. I think they're originally to put on like doors and stuff so they don't bang. Um, you can get the little plastic ones, which are like the grippy ones, which I didn't want those. It would have stopped the metal from scratching my desk, but then I wouldn't have been able to slide it across my desk. But these little fluffy ones means that it will slide across my desk really easily. But yeah, this little toolkit was only like three or four pound or something. I'm pretty sure from Flying Tiger. I can't imagine it being much more than that. But yeah, I've had it on my desk ever since and it just holds everything really nicely. Really, I should probably get rid of this and put this somewhere else and I'd have even more space in here for stuff. But I don't think I need it. Like I've got everything I need. There's definitely a certain way that I stack everything in here. Everything has its place to make sure that everything else um, stays where it is. It's very specific. Mm -mm -mm. that one and then my little washi samples just sit in there so there we go that's my little toolkit if you are thinking of journaling or you journal already and you're forever grabbing for different things out of drawers and stuff if you do have space on your desk then i definitely recommend doing something like this with some sort of container um doesn't have to be this big doesn't have to be this small but it's just really handy it's just so handy knowing that like my scissors my glue my tape my stamps and ink and everything is all just here so I can just grab for it whenever I need it. So if you've ever wondered what are my go-tos for journaling, these are them. <laughs> like I said with the adhesives, I do change them up every now and again. I use lots of different brands. I hope you enjoyed having a nosy through that with me. If you do have any questions, as always, let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching and if you're a patron, then your name will be on the screen now. Thank you guys so much for the support over there. If anyone wants to join us over on Patreon, there'll be a link down in the description. You'll be able to find a lot of digital perks over there there will be collage sheets that you can download and use in your journals you'll get early access to my videos and also a discount for my shop so if that interests you then go and check it out but yeah i hope you all have a lovely day and i will see you in my next video bye